All right, so um, optics. Uh, some of you may have heard of optics before. It's an SDK for building primarily uh, rendering engines that do ray tracing. It can be used for a wide variety of things. Um, it can be used for building ray tracers to do ambient occlusion, to bake into light maps for games. It can be used for real-time uh, ray tracing. Uh, you might have seen our design garage demo and there's a bunch of folks that are building real-time ray tracers out of optics. The highest performance ray tracers on the planet, in fact, are built on optics on NVIDIA GPUs. Um, it can be used to do high quality rendering on procedural surfaces. Uh, the folks at CCP, in fact, for EVE Online, use optics to do character portraits for the game, all using optics. Um, and something you might not have known um, is that optics is used um, actually as part of a lot of game developers' core pipeline. Um, it, can, it's, it can interact with and play with, and it can be built, used to be a building block to help produce great games. So the folks at Bungie, you might have heard of these guys, they're working on a little game called Destiny, which you might have heard of. Um, they're, in fact, using optics to author content for Destiny. They're building um, ambient obscurance. It's kind of a form of ambient occlusion, uh, basically doing global illumination, uh, pre-calculation for Destiny using optics on NVIDIA GPU farms. You know, you've, you've probably heard NVIDIA say that, you know, lots of game developers use NVIDIA GPUs. But you might not know that they use NVIDIA GPUs in ways you might not have thought about. They don't just use them to, to, as game engine development. They use them as actually core authoring for their game itself. So there's a GPU farm at Bungie that's cranking away, calculating ambient obscurance. Um, you can compute AO on a, a really complex scene um, in a little bit over a minute on this GPU farm. Orders of magnitude faster than the alternatives. They bake it out for use at runtime so you can hand, basically simulate real-time global illumination in Destiny. Um, and the, the fact that they can do this um, on NVIDIA kind of just as a testament to that, the strength of that core technology, the value that, that we're bringing to the game developer industry. They're taking some of our core technology, they're building tools themselves, built on technology that solve really important problems. It's pretty cool stuff. So we're really excited to be working with the, the Bungie guys on Destiny. Um, and they, by the way, this, if, if you're curious about this particular technique, um, this was presented at uh, SIGGRAPH Asia uh, by Peter Pike Sloan and, and the crew from Bungie. It's a, it's a pretty interesting technique, uh, again, built uh, on top of optics. Pretty cool stuff. So um, one other kind of um, technique uh, that we use is, uh, is for, amb for ambient occlusion is called Verizon-based ambient occlusion, or HBAO. Um, what this is is a technique for doing a real-time detailed shadows is a form of ambient occlusion. It's been integrated in a huge number of games. It's a highly optimized library for doing um, uh, AO. It, it scales across a, a wide range of GPUs. It, it runs on NVIDIA, it runs on AMD, um, and it's kind of a fundamental building block for doing lighting in games. It's been inter integrated into a bunch of games that, that you can kind of see up here. So let's go ahead and um, see kind of, kind of a before and after here. So this is a traditional kind of scene that you might see. Um, this is kind of, I'll call it old school um, ambient occlusion. The, uh, the challenge here, of course, is that, particularly in the car, uh, you're not getting a lot of the soft edges that you might get in real life with a, with a higher quality AO solution. So with horizon-based ambient occlusion, you get much more of that soft effect. So for particularly if you look underneath the car, kind of the old school effect tends to produce these hard edges. And in fact, um, ambient occlusion in real time is, a, I'll call it an approximation. Of, of a true kind of full-on path trace solution. And so it's not, it's not gonna be as accurate as a fully baked solution, but it's because it's done in real time, it can interact and characters can have it and that kind of thing, so in this case, it's a car. So if you look at the wheels, you get a, you get a little um, shadow bleeding onto the tire. Um, and with ambient occlusion, you get kind of that soft, that soft feel around it, which is you know, typically what a, a diffuse shadow would have. So um, that's one of our kind of cool technologies. So let's take a look at what this can do in, in uh, real time. So let's flip over to the demo. Oh, you've got it up already. So Jim, if you want to talk to it. Uh, so what we have here, well, what we have here is, uh, is, is, is a tool we have that basically allows you to visualize the effects of the HBO library on, um, on a variety of game scenes uh, from a game. So this is a scene actually from Splinter Cell Blacklist. And, uh, and <clears throat> the mode we've started this off in is kind of the, the, the traditional SSAO mode, which um, which and basically the, what happens with AO is that you, you do a search um, around the pixel that you're currently looking at and, and try to look for the occluders that are nearby. And, and the larger the search area, the more complex the algorithm is and the more difficult it is to compute in real time. Uh, and so what you end up getting is, as Tony showed in the previous slides, you don't get a lot of the, you know, the things that are further away or, or larger occluders like the bottom of this car don't actually produce shadows, right? So what we can do in, with HBAO is you can actually 
increase what's called what we're calling the radius multiplier here, or the radius of the search space, basically, and, and get a lot of uh, interesting AO effects um, that capture these larger, further away occluders. And we also have a number of tweaks that, that, that artists and designers can play with in, in, in designing uh, the parameters for our AO library. Uh, for example, the detail AO level where you can, you know, if you, if you jack this up, you get a lot of the fine details like the door handles and things like that. Or if you're looking for a more coarse solution because, say, some other shadow technology inside your game handles the details, you can, you can dial this down and have AO just handle the coarse, uh, the coarse areas. So it's, it's very flexible, it's very fast. Um, it's fast on, 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 on all GPUs. Uh, and, it's, uh, and it allows you to have really high quality uh, results, as we see here. So one of the other really cool things about um, not just this technology, but kind of the way we work with developers is we build tools that let developers play. So this particular tool, we can just grab a trace from their game. They don't have to go and integrate a bunch of code in their game. We can just grab a trace from the game, take the current game, grab a trace, bring it to this tool, and then they can play around with it. And they can decide whether AO is going to work for them or HBO is going to work for them or not. They can tweak with it. They can fiddle with it. So before they decide to invest a bunch of time coding and doing an implementation, they can just check it out. Right. This, this is another great, great kind of you know, capability that we provided them. Yeah, and you can see the final frame here as well. So this is uh, without the AO effect and with the AO effect, and you can, you can play with it here in the final frame um, as well. Pretty cool stuff. So are there any questions on AI? Yeah, okay. It's, it's okay to clap. <laughs> any questions on, on AO, any inclusion, any surprise base, um, any inclusion? That's one of the kind of core pieces of our technology that's been adopted kind of all over the place. Um, it's, it's got the kind of double benefit of it's the highest performance and mute occlusion and the highest quality. Um, and it's not often that you can do that, but that's really testament to the, those rocket scientists that we've hired, the, the game work researcher guys, that they've been able to invent a, an algorithm that is literally the best in class on both vectors, performance and, and quality. Cool stuff. All right. So um, one other uh, kind of technique that we've been working on, of course, is contact hardening shadows. If you're not familiar with what this means, in the real world, when you have an occluder and a light source, the shadow that gets cast typically is hard-edged near the base of the object, and as the shadow uh, gets away from the object, it gets to be more diffuse or soft edge. That's typically called contact hardening shadow. So we have a, a PCSS implementation that we've been working with on a variety of games. This is, it provides a lot of that kind of next level of shadow detail, particularly for direct light sources on you know, things like trees or chairs, and so you can kind of see it here. As it's close, the edge is hard. As it gets soft, it kind of fuzzes out and blurs out. Same thing with the, the chair there. You get the, the pole. I don't have a laser pointer, but I, like, right here, it's soft, and right there, it's hard. <laughs> um, these are, these are techniques that we've developed. They're delivered in, in a form to a developer that they can just easily integrate them. They can try them out if it's going to work for their game. Um, and they have the extra benefit, as, as Jen mentioned, is they are the highest performance implementation. So just a, a little example of that. If you take PCSS or HBAO, um, not only are they the highest quality implementations, but they're the fastest implementations. And they're the fastest not only on NVIDIA, but we actually improve the performance of the alternative implementations even on AMD. This is the kind of thing that game developers love. Because in the end, they just want their game to be great, right? And if you give them the highest quality solution that improves their frame rate, it either means the game can run on a, a wider range of hardware, which is just good, or they have more time or more CPU or GPU cycles to put more effects in the game to make the game look great. So these are just nothing but win-win for everybody. Great visuals, great performance uh, on everyone. 